In this video, I deal with a size issue. They're not very long. I burn something. Ah, oh, it's hot. And I let the numbers do the talking. It's Da Vinci time. So further to the previous case battery video, which is currently being suggested in the top corner, I had a number of comments after that video stating the prices of the case batteries had gone up significantly. And I've been keeping the check since and they have fluctuated quite a lot. So what I wanted to do was provide alternative budget battery options so you had greater choice on price as well. So in this video I see how the CERN's 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery measures up against my latest case battery. Anyway, enough chat, let's go. So when you empty the box, this is what you're left with. So you don't get a mains charger with this and you don't even get a manual, it's just the battery itself. And I'm just putting a picture up on screen now, just showing you how it came boxed. And I must say it was very well packaged and there was no signs of damage whatsoever. Right, time for a quick look round now. So let's start off on the top, which is the business end as such. And here are your main eight millimeter battery terminals. And these connect up to a common port BMS, pretty much like all of them. That means you can charge and discharge via the same terminals. And they have screw top terminals as well, pretty much like the case battery. And you get a little washer there as well. But one thing I will say is these terminals are quite short and I've only managed to get a thick and a thin lug on there at maximum, whereas the case battery I can get more on there up to a maximum of three. So I'm just going to lower that down a bit so you get a better idea, but yeah, they're not very long, so you need to make sure that you consider that if you're considering this battery, and you just need to make sure you tighten it up as such. And the battery handle here is pretty good for the weight of the battery. Uh, you also get a charging port, which I wasn't expecting on the original spec. And you need a four port uh, connector for this one. So you can actually charge this like you can charge a case battery, but you don't get the mains charger in this particular package when you buy this. And here we have the standard uh, capacity battery meter here, which is really not a true measure of the capacity of the batteries, but it gives you an idea of the uh, voltage of the battery and this uh, sort of figure here, which isn't really true. And on the front here, we have general sort of specifications, and again, this is supposed to be IP56, so it's water and dust resistant as well. Uh, it just gives you the details of the battery itself, but not the full spec. I'm just going to put the full spec up on the screen now. And that concludes the quick tour. So further to the previous case battery video where I used it to power my coffee machine to make a cuppa. I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to connect the battery up to my best tech inverter and then to my newer coffee machine which can draw up to 1310 watts according to the specs. But before I finish connecting up the inverter and the battery, I'm just going to point out a little safety tip here in the fact that when you're connecting cables up, it's best to connect them to the inverter first before connecting to the battery. Because if you connect the cables to the battery terminals first, the two ends are live. And if you short them out on any surface and that, you could actually cause some damage. So that's why I'm going to finish that off now. And I'm also going to use a little resistor here to stop the spark happening and potentially damaging the terminal and internal components. And that helps to charge or pre-charge the resistors in the inverter itself. So let's hook that up now. Touch that there. See, so no spark. I'm just going to get the terminal tighten down to make sure that's nice and tight which it is so I'm going to switch on the uh, inverter now and that's just powering up give that a few seconds to power up so the display is on now ready to go so I'm just going to preheat the uh, water in the coffee machine so I'm going to push the button Okay, that's now flashing on the top there. That means it's preheating now. 
So once that stopped flashing, I can start making the cuppa. And as you can hear, the fan's actually increased in speed now because of the load being pulled. Okay, it stopped flashing now, so I'm just gonna push and see whether we can get a cuppa. It's making all the right noises. And there we have it, so taste test time. Oh, it's hot. And there we have it. A lovely steaming cup of coffee. Right, time to weigh the battery now, so let's put that on there and see what we get. So that's now stopped at 11.6 kilograms. So in summary, the CERN's battery is actually built okay for a budget option, and it actually did okay in the load test, and in general usage, it's been fine. It's a shame the battery didn't match its advertised capacity as I wanted to provide an alternative budget option. Now that could be down to a number of reasons, like one duff cell, the cells might not have been matched or balanced correctly when the pack was built, or they're just grade B cells. But I can't really recommend a battery that doesn't meet its advertised capacity. So in this case, I suggest that if you wanted to get one of these batteries, that you maybe look to see when the case battery is actually cheaper and then purchase it then. So as I've raised before, when it comes to purchasing on AliExpress, you can actually raise a dispute. And I've done that in this case, and you have two options. You can actually send the unit back as in the battery, or you can get a partial refund. So I went for the partial refund option, and this is what I got. We hope you liked our video. All the links you'll need to be in the description below. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And stay tuned to DadVinci.